close your eyes and watch your breath. Take some time to see when it's coming in, when it's going out, and stay with the sensation of the breathing. As for the other thoughts, you can just put them aside. As for any outside sounds, you don't have to make any comments on them. They're going to be there whether you comment on them or not, so you don't have to comment. Just stay with the breath. Comment on the breath. Does it feel good? What kind of breathing would feel better? Longer or shorter? Deeper or more shallow? The breath is something that we can control, and yet we often don't get that much use out of it. It's what keeps us alive, and if you don't consciously focus on the breath, that's all it does. But if you focus on it, you begin to realize that when you're tired, it can give you energy. When you're tense, it can relax you. When you're feeling hot, it can cool you down. When you're feeling cold, it can warm you up. The way you breathe has a huge impact on how you experience the body. And of course, how you experience the body is going to have an impact on your mind. If the body's feeling good, then the mind feels unburdened. One of our main problems in life is that we place huge burdens on ourselves, and then we complain that we're weighed down by things. We don't realize the extent to which those burdens come from within. This is one of the reasons why we meditate, to get the mind in the present moment, so you can observe yourself. See what your thoughts are doing, see what your words are doing, what your actions are doing, what impact they have, both outside and inside. And if you see it's having a good impact, okay, you can keep it up. If not, you can change. That's the basic message that the Buddha has, is that we're causing ourselves unnecessary suffering. When you see that it's unnecessary and you can figure out how you don't have to do it anymore, then you can let it go. And it turns out the suffering that weighs us down is the suffering that we create. Things happen outside that can make us unhappy. They can be unpleasant, but it's there's part of us that has to play along to make ourselves unhappy with those events. And that's where you want to learn how to see. And when you can see that clearly and learn how to change the habits of the mind, okay, then you can live in the world and you don't have to suffer. You can get material gain and you don't suffer from the gain. You don't usually think of people suffering from the gain, but they do. They're worried about how to keep it, and they do all sorts of unskillful things to keep it, and then when they use it, many times that's unskillful as well, and that creates suffering for themselves. So we don't suffer from gain, we don't suffer from loss, we don't suffer from status or loss of status, praise or criticism. We realize that these things are things of the world. They don't really belong to us, even though people may na say nice things about us. It's what, it's their karma. And they have the right to change around and say something really not nice about us, too. That's something that's totally out of your control. So what you want to focus on are the things that you can control, starting with the breath and then moving into your own mind. Learn how to gain some control there, and you find that the amount of suffering that you feel in the world, even just little bits of stress, just go away, go away. And there's a greater sense of lightness and ease as you go through life. To try to develop this skill and see what it teaches you about your own mind and how you can change your own habits. So you cause less suffering for yourself, less suffering for the people around you. People come to the monastery for a New Year blessing. Well, this is the best blessing you can get, is gaining the skill where you don't have to weigh yourself down with unnecessary stress and suffering. That way your mind becomes a blessing to itself.